Well, hello everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living. I'm glad that you're here. This is going to be a fantastic day. Today's reading is by Mr. Ernest Holmes. I think we've heard of him. He says, Life is infinite energy coupled with limited, limitless creative energy imagination. It is the invisible essence and substance of every visible form. Its nature is goodness, truth, wisdom, and beauty, as well as energy and imagination. Our highest satisfaction comes from a sense of conscious union with this invisible life. All human endeavor is an attempt to get back to first principles to find such an inward wholeness that all sense of fear, doubt, and uncertainty vanishes. And so it is. It's time. Time for what? Are you oh, no, good, okay. <laughs> Ew. That could have been awkward. Especially if we didn't plan anything for today. Ooh. What's he going to talk about? You stay here out of my way. That's what my wife says. <laughs> and you, oh yes, you are beautiful, but you're going to be beautiful in the corner. That's what I tell my children. <laughs> I'm glad you guys came this morning. It's good, me too. It's good to see you here. Uh, I used to feel quite a bit of pressure to be me. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. Like you feel like you have this gift to give. And it's important to you because it's the one gift, the one thing you have. Come on in! It's okay. Talk's almost over. It's cool. <laughs> you just missed everything. Just kidding. Have a seat. But I used to feel this pressure to give this gift because I felt like this gift was so important. Like it, it had been entrusted to me. Like right before stepping onto this plane of reality, someone said, here, you give this to them. And I said, what is it? He said, she said, it said, you'll find out. And I said, that's pretty mysterious, but okay. And I've always been very protective of it, very protective. Not good at following rules, not good at staying in boxes, because I feel like this gift is so important. But it does bring a lot of pressure Especially when someone blesses you like I've been blessed today. When someone speaks so highly of you. When they think that you're something. And you're like, yeah. You start to think I'm something. But then that creates pressure. But then I remember. I remember what Ram Dass said. Ram Dass, Richard Alpert was this doctor at Harvard. And then he went to India and came back as Ram Dass Baba. Ram Dass. And he was speaking to these psychiatrists and he was speaking to these spiritual seekers. And he sat down in front of them and they're all on the edge of their seats thinking, oh, oh what are you going to teach today? What's, what's the gift that you're going to give? What are you going to give to us? What are you gonna, I'm ready. Deliver it. And he said, I'm just doing me. I'm just doing me. You may come and hear. You may come and speak. You may laugh a little bit. You may gain something. You may gain nothing. I have no control over that. I'm just doing me. And that's the only dance there is. All I can do is be me. Because at the beginning, when I was given that, it's me. And you were given that too. You were given a gift, and that gift is you. And you get to give that to the world. What a great thing to be given. What a great gift you are. So thank you for that song. So I've been here a few times. I've stood up here in front of you, in front of some of you, not all of you, in front of a few of you. In front of you, Nika, yes, you. <laughs> you stood in front of me. Yes, I stood in front of you. Held your hand, hugged you, kissed you, some of you. <laughs> and every time I'm here, I feel like there's this vague sense of familiarity. What a great word. I feel like there's this vague sense of familiarity about this place. When I walk and I say, ooh, it's the carpet. I love this carpet. When I sit in these chairs, I'm like, this is pretty comfy. You may notice each time I come, a chair disappears. 
My wife's like, do you have fun? I'm like, yeah, what's that? It's a chair. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? I'm going to put it with the rest because I want to take some of what you have home with me. I see the walls. I see the pictures. I'm like, those are pictures, but they're pillows. That's weird, but I like it. The candles, everything. You, you, you're so familiar to me. It just feels very, very nice. Like you're walking into, what did I say earlier? Like you're walking into a bathtub. Was it a bathtub? No, it was a hot tub. Well, let's get a little more intimate. It's a bathtub. <laughs> this morning was the meditative service. Now we're just going to let it loose. <laughs> Break the chains! Let's say it's the evening. It's been a long day. Work is hard. Family, children, everyone's sick. <laughs> you know, and you just, I mean, you, you, you're just, you're pent up. It's like you're carrying the day with you. It's like you're a truck with a trailer. You're a tractor trailer with a trailer. And that trailer is the day. And you're bringing it along with you. And then you step into it. <sighs> oh. And. Oh. That's what this place is to me. It's very bathtubby. <laughs> Yet. Yet, however, comma, but, it's not the same, is it? No, it's not. No, 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 no. I look around at you and I see, I see there's something different. Yeah, I see there's something that's changed. Yes, there's that air of familiarity. Yes, there's that warm <laughs> bathtub feeling, but no, 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 no. Something is different. And I'm almost, I've almost got it. Hold on. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I want to walk out there, but I'm being filmed. <laughs> you, seriously? <laughs> Shake the chains, brother. Wait, wait, it's you. It's you. And it's you, and it's you, and it's you, and it's, and it, oh, it's so you. <laughs> it's all of, oh, that's what it is. I know what it is now. I know what's different. I know what's changed in this bathtub. It's you. You've changed, haven't you? Yes. A. <laughs> Does that mean you're decaying? No, you've changed. Seriously, you have a different perspective now because you've had different experiences. Your body is moving and shifting around you. You've changed. You're not the same people I've spoken to before. And oh, I've changed, haven't I? I'm not the same person. I could get up here. Let's just say I wrote this stuff down and, and had talks. Let's just say I planned. <laughs> I. <laughs> I could have, I could take, let's, let's also say, this is great, let's also say I frame my talks after I'm done with them. <laughs> yeah, Triangle Center for Spiritual Living, March something, next. And let's say I got that, I broke the glass, and I delivered the exact same talk to you, word for word, as I delivered last time. Would it be the same? No! Because I'm not the same. I would deliver those words different, and you would receive those words different. Because you're shifting, you're moving, you're changing. You're evolving, you're expanding, you're contracting. You're in the midst of this beautiful movement. And even the things you think are the same, like these chairs, they're moving too. They're filled with subatomic particles. Is that how Elvis would say it? As a Elvis the scientist. Subatomic particles. <laughs> Elvis, what's in this chair? Subatomic particles. There's a whole lot of changing going on <laughs> in the chairs. The chairs aren't actually as constant as we think they are. The rocks, the mountains, the earth itself, it's all moving. It's all changing. It's all evolving. These walls, everything is shifting and moving and expanding and contracting in this beautiful thing that we call life. You could say, I'm going to say it. Not could, will, am going to say that the one fundamental constant in reality, 
the one thing that doesn't change in this is the fact that it all changes. And you can feel it, can't you? Can you feel the movement? In the trees and in the ground you walk on and in your body, you walk by the mirror and go, ah. <laughs> or maybe you walk by the mirror and go, ooh. <laughs> like a fine wine, just waiting to be <laughs> Whatever that means. But you can feel it, don't you? You can feel it all around. You can feel the shifting and swaying and chaining. It's like a dance. Like Ram Dass says, the only dance there is is this. This thing you're experiencing, this beautiful life of shifting motion and change. It's like um, you have a camera, and the camera's pointed on a field. And you have that camera there, and you record the field for a year. Maybe a couple. Let's just say a year. And then you record it all year and you play it back in like 10 seconds. Have you ever seen that? They do it on TV with a, with a falling. And what you see is you see the rising of the plants and the blooming of the flowers and the motion of the seasons and the light and the dark and the light and the dark and the inevitable expanse of summer and then the slow, beautiful wilt of fall down into the death of winter and repeat. That's what all this is. And it's beautiful. And it's wonderful. And it's natural. There's nothing more natural than change. There's nothing more beautiful than movement because if life didn't move, it wouldn't be life. Life's got to move, baby. Life's got to shift. Life's got to change. And yet, mm, you ever feel like that? Mm. That's how children are. See, children know. Livy's my daughter. She's eight. I'm like, what's wrong with you, Livy? Mm. <laughs> That's cool. They, they experience life through, like, you know, telekinesis. How are you feeling? <laughs> that means feed me, <laughs> buy me something. But you can feel it, can't you? That even though all this is changing, it's slightly uncomfortable. It's like the movement. There's something about it that we don't like. There's something about this movement that causes an existential pain. Because it's fleeting, it's, and it's moving, and it's changing, and there's something about it. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about all this movement that got, gets me so down. It's like I just want to stop it for a second. I've been thinking about that. I thought about it all week long. I thought about it in the rain. I thought about it on a train. <laughs> I have children, so everything's a kid's book. But I thought about it all week, everywhere I was. It's, it's, my wife says when I get something on my mind, I ignore everything else. I'm like a, like a steam train. <laughs> because I want to pierce it. Bill's right, I have this thirst. I want to know. I want to know what it is. I want to know what it means, this pain. I want to know where it comes from. So all week long I've been asking why. Where does this pain come from? Why are we so uncomfortable with change and movement? And then it dawned on me, like the sunrise, it rose in me. And I saw this illumination, I saw this light, and also this confusion. The reason we have such a problem with change is that we're lost. We're lost in Maya. You know what Maya is? She's this chick down the street. <laughs> restaurant. She works at a restaurant. She was? Maya's restaurant? Yeah, Maya's. And, uh, no, okay. Maya is a Sanskrit word. It means illusion. It means magic of creation. It means change, it means shifting, it means movement, it means a veil that's sitting in front of us and we're lost and we're trying to find our way in it and it's beautiful and it's natural and it makes complete sense and we should accept it, our bodies, but it's all moving, it's all changing. We're trying to get some grounding, trying to get a little peace, trying to hold on to something, but holding on to life is like holding on to air. And you just can't seem to do it, can you? It drives you crazy, that's why I have no hair, I pulled it all out. <laughs> trying to figure this out. There's this great kids movie. See, kids movies are great, bro. You should watch them. You need some youth. 
Great kids movie is called Sinbad. <sighs> you know, late 90s maybe. Sinbad is this pirate. He's a pirate. Sails the seas. He's cool. Played by Brad Pitt. So cool. I know, right? <laughs> Does someone just say, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Played by Brad Pitt. But Brad Pitt, as Sinbad the pirate, makes a deal with Ares, the goddess of discord. Deals with the gods. So very Greek. But in order to deliver on the deal, in order to take her what she needs, he has to go to Tartarus. And Tartarus is the realm of chaos. It's where Ares lives. It is Ares. And when he gets there, he like falls out of the sky and poosh, lands in this shifting desert of sand. Tartarus is nothing but movement, sand and clouds and coming together, and you can't get your bearing because it's all moving around, and you don't know what to do with it because you can't get your, you, you can't stand on anything. You can't find any peace. And that's what life is. I was like, yes, that's it, Sinbad. I thought back to that time when I was watching it. I was like, yeah, that's it. Life is Tartarus, the shifting sands of time. And all we want is a little peace. All we want is a little stability. All we want is to hold on to something. And that's where the pain comes from. The pain is not life itself. Life is wonderful. The pain is trying to hold on to it. Because I walked out of my porch this morning with my coffee and my bathrobe. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. And I went around, and I looked out, I dropped the paper, uh, I, lo I looked out, and there was the sunrise. I love getting up early. <laughs> but the great thing about getting up early is the sunrise, it's right there. And as soon as I saw it, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to keep it. Have you ever felt, <laughs> copy that? Have you ever felt that? That when something beautiful happens, which is life, when something amazing happens, their first instinct is to try to hold on to it. Try to grip it, try to grab it, try to hold it, try to possess it, because you know it's changing. And it's air, but you try to do it in. The pain doesn't come from life. The pain comes from, let me possess that. Let me have that, because something in us knows it's moving. Something in us knows it's changing. So we just try to grip and try to hold and try to pull. But we can't. We can't. You can feel it when you maybe go on vacation or when you're sitting on the couch with a loved one, or when you're, oh, children. When you're watching your child walk off to kindergarten for the first time, and you just want to run after her. <laughs> Daddy loves you! <laughs> and she's just like. <sighs> and then you do it every year until they're like teenagers, just because you can. <laughs> but you try to hold on to life. You try to grip it. You try to control it, but you can't. And that's where that pain comes from from trying to hold on to the shifting, changing si si size, size, breath. Okay, we'll get to that. To the shifting sands of time. And you're trying to pull it in, trying to hold it because you want some peace. You want some stability. You want things not to move for once. You want something that's unmovable. You want something that's unchangeable. And all this temporal shift, you want something that's eternal. But life just keeps on moving. I should just leave you there. Dropped you in a hole. <laughs> that is life. You're right. It does move. <laughs> My baby's all grown. <sighs> but there's a bright side. You want it or you mean just leave you? No? Nope. <laughs> Someone does. Thank you so much. The bright side to all this, the sh bright side to the shadows, shadows and light are always together, by the way. Every time there's sun, there's dark. Every time there's a ray, there's a shadow. There's always two sides to it, and they're both beautiful. But the bright side is that you're not alone. As life shifts and changes, as life moves in and out, and you're a part of this movement, that's the crazy thing. You are the sand. As life comes in and out, as the breath animates it, there's someone else who's lost. Someone else who's right there with you the whole time. And you can feel it. It makes you want to sing. It's like Sesame Street, right? Let's talk about numbers. One. <laughs> 
God is lost too. This uh, philosopher Ken Wilber once said that life is hide and seek. God losing itself and finding itself and losing itself and finding itself. When I talked about creation earlier, you almost probably got the sense that there's this breathing going on. Expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. Come on in, brother. Join us. Life is good. But you get this sense that there's this, there's something breathing. You see, when God empties itself into life, it has to lose itself. God only has one desire. The ground of being the infinite potential of all of life. That thing which is at the base of all this. That thing which pushes itself through you and through life. That thing which is the breath. There's this wonderful, wonderful analogy in the uh, Old Testament in Genesis where God takes the ground and moves the ground together and gets it up into his hands. Adama, Adam, which means ground, and breathes into it the breath of life and the life form expands and becomes a being. That's what creation is. God emptying itself, losing itself in you so it can know itself. That's God's only desire, to know itself, to experience itself, and it does so through you. Yay! That's the gift. That's the secret that you are God pushing itself to expand and you can feel it as you move up and down and up and down. But in order to do that, God must lose itself in order to know because infinity can't know infinity. Infinity can only know an expression of temporality because God is singular. The singular can't know itself because it's one thing. So it divides and empties. So you are God experiencing life. You are God expressing itself. You are God losing itself. That's what love is all about. Love's not about taking. Love's about giving. Love's about losing yourself in something or someone. That's what real love is, and that's why we say that God is love, because God is losing yourself. When you really, start, when you really start to love someone, you begin to lose yourself, but also find yourself. And that's what all this is about, really. That's the secret. All of theology, all of religion, all of spirituality is just a quest to find the thing that's looking for us. It's like we can't. We know it's here. We know it's here in the midst of this change. We know it's here in the midst of this flux. We know it's actually the breath that animates all this. And we're trying to find it. And we're trying to look for it. And it's given rise to all this beautiful religion, all this beautiful spirituality, all this beautiful expression that's just us trying to find that thing which doesn't change. If life has changed and we want a little bit of peace, we want a little bit of stability, we need to look for the thing that doesn't change. If life is temporal, meaning life doesn't last, and we know it doesn't, we know it. We know we have to eventually let go. We know that. It's natural. I'm not teaching you anything here. I should be, but I'm not. If we want something that's not temporal, that's eternal, we have to look for the thing that lasts, the thing that doesn't change. If everything is moving, we need to look for the thing that doesn't move. What is that thing? What is that one thing that doesn't change? What is that one thing that doesn't move? What is that one thing that lasts forever because it has no beginning, it has no end, it is Alpha, it is Omega, and it's everything in between, and how do we find it? Well, I'll tell you. <clears throat> Close your eyes. Ooh, yeah, you look nice. <laughs> Sounds like something else my wife would say. You look nice when I close my eyes. Oh, thank you. Wait! Wait just a minute. No, oh, think back. Think back on your sandy experience of life. Think to youth. That's good. Think to youth. Think to those moments in the grass barefoot. How did that feel? Think about your first friend, him or her. Think about parents, grandparents. Think about School, pencils. How do those pencils smell? I used to love the smell of pencils. Didn't like writing with them much. <laughs> but like the smell of them. Think about middle school. Think about changing classes. Think about new friends, old friends. Think about, ooh, yeah, think about high school. Think about defiance. Think about challenging. Think about that first cigarette you smoked in the bathroom. Defiance. Think about throwing up afterwards. <laughs> 
That's what I did. Think about college. Think about going off. Think about leaving home. Think about the pain. Think about losing someone or something. Think about losing someone. Think about gaining something. Think about that kiss. Think about the first time you kissed the one that you cannot live without. It's all changing, isn't it? I mean, do you even recognize yourself back then? Who was I? Who am I now? But now, now think about the one thing that hasn't changed in all of that. Think about the one constant through your life. The one line that connects it all together. Did someone say you? Well, say it louder. You! Open your eyes. The one thing that connects all your experiences together is you. Is the one experiencing it is the one looking out. We get caught up in this illusion because we're looking for something that's looking out. What binds your entire life together is the consciousness that's aware of it. The thing that is standing in Tartarus unmoved. You're so lost because all this is moving. (laughs) You don't realize that, oh, I'm standing still. This is all moving. This. Oh, this is moving, but it's moving around something. It's moving around the one experiencing it. It's moving around the God that just wants a little bit of experience, therefore made you. Paul, y'all know Paul? You're Paul? Dude, those, those letters you wrote in that book, those are pretty cool. You were like in jail, and you're like, you know, I'm in jail. I'm going to be tortured and killed, but you know, Christ is with me. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, cool. Anyway, your, uh, your letter to the Corinthians, loved it. Uh, Paul, was a fa- uh, Paul was a Jew. He was a Pharisee, so he probably went to the temple a lot, you know. He probably had a secret entrance in the back, you know, with his little <laughs> credentials. Paul, Paul. Actually, no, I'm sorry. That was later on. Saul, 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 Saul. He tried to get in later. It's like, Paul, no, we don't know a Paul. <laughs> we knew a Saul. But he, in the temple, in the Jewish temple, in the very middle of the Jewish temple, the Jewish temple was pretty big before it was destroyed by the Romans again. Goodness gracious, poor Jews. Uh, In the very middle was what they called the Holy of Holies. And that's where God lived. It's like God's pad. That's what they said. Welcome to God's pad. I don't think they talked like that. But in the very middle of the temple was the Holy of Holies. And only the high priest could go in there. And only once a year on Yom Kippur. And what the high priest would do was pull back a curtain because that's what separated a curtain. And that's really what kept people out. Don't go behind the curtain. You mean this? So the uh, high priest would go into there once a year and make a petition uh, to God on behalf of the Jewish people for the coming year. But that's where God lived. God lived in the Holy of Holies behind that curtain. Then, (laughs) sorry. Then Paul comes and writes a letter saying, you know what? This is groovy. Just thought of this. Your body is a temple. And deep within it is the Holy of Holies. Right behind a curtain, the curtain of illusion. Right behind a curtain is where God lives. You want to find that which doesn't move? You want to find that which doesn't change? Ask what's looking out. Get quiet. Get silent. Stop the movement. Stand in Tartarus and say, you know what? Chill for a second. And let it all sink. Because when you stop paying attention to it, it all stops moving. The Buddha said it's like water. You know, every time you strike the water, ripples, 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 change, change, maya, maya. But if you stop and leave it alone, it all sinks down. And when you do, There's this stillness. There's this peace. There's this thing that doesn't change, that doesn't move. And once you tap into it, once you just touch it, you wake up. The Buddha, I mean, Buddha wasn't his name. Like, hey, Mr. Buddha. Buddha means awakened one, just like Christ means anointed one. 
And Buddha, he woke up. What did he awake to? He woke up to the reality. He woke up to truth. He pulled back the veil and saw God and saw that while all this is changing, there's something that doesn't change. So what should I do? I should let go and let it move around me. Because once that's, once you get a hold of that, not a hold of it, that's a bad analogy. Once you tap into that, you begin to see it everywhere. It's very, very cool. Because as you're walking through Tartarus, as you're walking through the changing, swifting sands of time, you see that they're moving around something. And then the movement doesn't really bother you anymore. Because it's shifting and changing around something that's still, something that's peaceful, and you start to see it in everyone. And you're like, oh, okay. I'm going to stay. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, there I am. There I am. Hide and seek. There I am. Oh, it's me. 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 There I am. And then the illusion doesn't really matter that much anymore. It's good. You love it. You embrace it, but you walk out on your porch <laughs> in your robe. Oh, that's a beautiful sunrise. You know? And you just let it go. You let it move through you. Because air only works. I don't know if you've been to the doctor recently. <laughs> Breath, rua, spirit, spiritus that which animates you, it only works if it moves through you. <laughs> you got to let it in, and then you got to let it out again. When I got here this morning, I said to myself, there's something vaguely familiar about this. I was right. It's that thing that you found here. It's the reason you come here. It's that thing which doesn't move. It's that thing which doesn't change. It's the reason you keep coming back. And it's why everything becomes so familiar. Because it's all just you. Just me. You're going to gain... You're going to gain some stuff as you get through, go through life. As you age. As you get old as you get very, very old. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna gain some stuff as you age. One thing you're gonna get, you're gonna get some knowledge, and all knowledge is is information. It's just information. It's what the sand is telling you. You know, you send out your feelers into the world and you get some information about what's going on. Knowledge is good. Love knowledge. Very important. You're also going to gain a little understanding. And that's how you use knowledge. That's when you start to realize that everything I put out comes back. That's when you start to realize that everything I give takes and everything that takes gives. Laws of karma and causality. The sands shift in a certain way. You start to understand that. It helps you live your life a little better. But then, and this usually happens as you get older because the more that changes, the more you realize that doesn't change. The more that shifts, the more you realize what doesn't shift. The more you age, it's w the more you realize what doesn't age. And that's wisdom. And wisdom has to do with understanding and knowledge of that which is stillness. And it's all very natural and it's all happening to you right now. All you have to do Is let go. Thank you so much for listening to me. I appreciate it. Um, pray. You know, we have to pray just to make it today. That's what MC Hammer said. Saint MC Saint. Hammer. Yes. So close your eyes if you don't mind. You don't have to, really. I mean, I don't want to tell you what to do. I hate being told what to do. You know, I'm going to tell them to close my eyes. I'm open them. What about that? <laughs> but, um, let it sink, man. That's all I want to say to you right now in this prayer. Let it sink. 
Don't hold yourself up in the chair. Sit in the chair. Let it sink, man. The chair is going to hold you up. Don't worry. Even you, Bill. It's going to hold you, man. Let go of all the things you're holding on to right now. You know, when I find myself in times of trouble, I was actually being serious. Mother Mary comes to me and tells me to let it be. Let it be. Let it be means let it sink. Let it be. Let the sands move. Just let the sands move. Be the sand. Watch the sand from the place that is stillness. And you can feel it right there. It's actually a very interesting job, you know, this thing talking to you because I'm explaining something that really can't be explained. I'm telling you about something that you already know about in the, in the deepest parts of you and trying to put some words to it, but I can't tell you what it is. I really, all I can do is kind of point you to it. But you know, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You know, it, you know it's there. You know it's there. So sit with that. But you know what the hardest thing about meditative practice is? <laughs> is that it's effortless. You know, something that a wise man would say, well, sir, wise man, guru, how do I meditate? Well, you need to stop trying to meditate. Just sit. Maybe he'd say it like that. I hope he'd. That's in my mind he says it like that. Just sit. Spirituality is a return trip. It's a return to the source. It's going, it's letting go and falling back into that which you already are. It's not something you have to achieve. It's not something you have to get. It's actually something you give because once you fall back into that, you just shine it out for others and they awake to. Oh, the sand is beautiful. I love the sand. The sand is beautiful. But it's a lot more precious if you stop trying to hold it. It's a lot more precious if you just let it fly by. Yeah, so you're aging, so what? There's something that's not. There's one thing that's not. And that's you. There it is. There it is. And because it always is, we say, and so it is. Thank you.